this is our Mago Lego class, which is a data science for business. Um, this is going to be the very first lecture. It's actually not going to be very long. It's it's an introductory lecture. Um, we're going to talk about, well, what this course is going to be about. And we have like around 130 people in the course. Um, it will be taught in English. Um, just some technicalities. Yeah, we'll have lectures from 6 to 7.30. Well, today it's going to be a little bit shorter. We have seminars. Um, here is a Zoom. Um, the links for the Zoom, um, there are passwords, but, you know, Anbar has shared them with you. Um, they're going to be a class website. I need to update it. We'll do it uh, over the weekend. There is a GitHub for the seminars, and Anbar will tell a little bit more later how he's going to run the seminars. Um, there is a Telegram group, and we're going to be using, as a, as a modeling software, we're going to be using Python, and we're going to be using Orange as their um, flow modeling software tool. And again, we're going to teach you um, how to use it. So the teaching team instructors, so my name is Lena Jukov. I'm going to be teaching this course. And Anwar uh, Kurmokov, he is going to be helping with their seminar slash labs. And Anwar, please say say hi so everybody will see you hi okay hello come on, a few more words <laughs> um so anwar will be helping with all of the, the the homeworks and and uh, helping run the course now we actually did a little bit of of uh yeah we, we ask you to guys fill out a questionnaire to just see where the class is coming from um, there are 100 out of 130, there are 100 people responded. Um, and that's what we have, right? So, we share school of business at 23%. Uh, on the previous offering of this class, we actually, I don't think we even had, I, I think it, it didn't exist back then. Um, then the FKN computer now 18%, social sciences 14%. Well, and you can see um, the rest. So, we actually have a very, very broad mix of uh, you know, faculties of, of, of specialties, right? From business to computer science, social science, economics, uh, electronica, electronics, uh, statistics, neurosciences, management, um, informatics, mathematics, politics. Wow, I mean, like pretty much, I think you're coming from all over um, the, the, the high school of economics. Now, a little bit more details on your background, and this this is important for our class, right? Um, so we're actually sort of debating on how to teach this class, whether to use uh, you know just Python or or you know some other software, um, and uh, we actually looking at these responses, we realize that pretty much <clears throat> only fifteen percent. Um, of the class is not familiar with Python, um, and uh, that leaves 85%, you know, Python, let me put it this way, from beginners to, to advanced Python users. So what it means to us is the following. We're going to be teaching this course primarily in Python, but we're going to be using also software that will help data flow, software that will help programming, and we will spend a few um, seminars at the beginning to help those of you who never, those 15% who never used Python to get started um, and well, you know, to catch up a bit, right? And for those of you who are experts, those courses that the, the, those uh, seminars might not be very interesting or useful, but again, you'll talk to Anwar in terms of uh, precisely how he's gonna run that. Also looking at, um, on the right-hand side, you see uh, distribution for like data science, ML, uh, courses, various sort of knowledge on the data science of, of, of a type of a data science. And you realize that, uh, again, we've got pretty much 50 50, right? 50% 50 of you um, have had some sort of, you know, data science course or machine learning course, um, either here in high school of economics or somewhere else. Um, and, and, and half of you not. So, again, for us, for, for instructors, that, for this, that, that, you know, gives us certain challenge, right? 
uh, we need to teach at the same time people who are, you know don't know what machine learning is and those who already know what it is. So some lectures for some of you or some parts of the lectures for some of you might 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 sound easier and more familiar for others will be a little bit more complicated. But this class is really about uh, taking business problems and then uh, converting them into um, analytical problems uh, and then finding data science solutions. So this is a hands-on class. So we will be you know, working with data, we'll be solving real world problems, um, but we'll be going right from the business side of the problem to the numerical solution. Textbooks for the, for the course. Um, well, there are several books I would recommend. Now we do not follow precisely neither of those of these books, but um, they're good reading and good help. Um, so the first book is Data Science for Business. Um, they're written by uh, two professors from um, New York, I think at Stern School of Business. Uh, actually, a very, very good book on you know, data science for business, which is uh, the name of this course also. Um, and, and it goes from, you know, again, business concepts to data science solutions. Um, the second book is this Data Science for Marketing Analytics. Um, actually, I kind of found it a few days ago. I think it's actually a good um, addition to the, the first book. Um, and, and the reason is um, a lot of problems that we'll be talking about in this course, they're in fact, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're problems around marketing because we're gonna be talking about customer acquisition, customer retention. Um, we're gonna be talking about pricing. We're gonna be talking about a lot of things, but they're most of the things are B2C kind of problems. And um, so, so that's that, that book is quite relevant. And um, you know, the last book is this predictive analytics is actually a, quite a good read. Uh, you might not, you will not find formulas there uh, or code, uh, but it gives you a very good impression on how predictive analytics is actually used in practice in business. And by the way, you will notice we kind of always interchange this, this names, you know, data science, predictive analytics. Um, well, you know, there are, there are some differences um, in the way people use those, but um, we're going to use those, the, the, those terms uh, interchangeably. So the course. Um, we're going to try to run the scores um, using case studies, which is probably more familiar to people who have been to business schools or, or consulting. Um, and, and, and the reason we want to teach you techniques, um, not just sort of in general, but techniques relevant to the problem. So introduce the techniques when, which, when, when we have some business problem we want to solve. And we're going to come up with a solution um, using certain techniques. And we're going to introduce and explain those techniques during those case uh, studies. Um, so the first lecture is actually today. This is just sort of general concepts on, on, about data science and how it is used in business. Um, the second lecture will be introductory lecture on uh, data analysis and machine learning. So we're going to go over all kinds of machine learning techniques, uh, classification, clustering, regression, um, et cetera, just giving you an introduction to machine learning um, that might be a little bit boring for those who are familiar with it, but um, is, is an important for those who have never seen machine learning and machine learning in action. And then we'll have case studies. Um, we outline several case studies that we want to go through. Um, the first case study, we're gonna be churn modeling, um, which is predicting which customers are gonna leave the service and we're going to formulate this problem as a classification problem and and, and solve it um, there are sort of different versions um, you can build you can you can formulate it as a sort of binary you can formulate it as uh, calculating probabilities um, etc cetera, etc cetera. but it, it is quite a general approach here we we are uh, talking about churn which is a customer leaving the service but you can also think about um, you know customer performing any other action, um, this uh, model can be applied. The second case study is a custom segmentation. This is sort of the, the absolute classic for marketing, where you want to find the natural groupings of the customers um, when you don't know precisely you know, how they're going to be grouped um, and you not, do not up, up front sort of split them into, I don't know, by age 
or by height or by weight or whatever, right? And you're just trying to find the, the natural way um, customers will group into different groups. And then for each of the group, yes, you can propose different strategies of interacting, different discounts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, we're going to be using, um, for customer segmentation, we're going to be using clustering. And I think we're going to be using some dimensionality reduction to actually uh, you know, look at uh, the, the segmentation to actually visualize things. Um, the third case study is a demand forecast. Now, this is again one of the sort of key problems in operations um, when you deal with with uh, you know whether it's B two C or B two B problems. You want to predict um, the demand, and based on that, yes, you can um, obviously you know stuff your your and and and, and uh, you know to schedule all the logistics um, and stuff the warehouses and um, you know do a lot of things and demand forecasting can be like quite um, sort of it, it can be long term it can be short term it can be, you know you can do seasonal things um etc cetera, etc cetera. um and we're going to be using uh, various types of uh, regression techniques to do that um, next study, next case we're going to look into is personalization. Um, here we're going to talk about recommender systems. So personalization in the sense of, um, again, it's marketing. Um, what kind of offers we can provide for each customer or if it's a point of sale and there is a particular, um, you know, type, particular items we want to recommend you know, with a discount. Or, or just recommend to buy. Um, so there are different sort of versions of, of approaches here. Um, we're gonna be looking at uh, some simple building, some very simple recommend, recommender uh, systems here. Um, uh, finally, we have a case study we're thinking of a case study about pricing and that's how you set up price uh, depend, depending on uh, multiple parameters. Um, and it's it might be a sort of changing prices. Um, okay. So these, and then you know, the last lecture um, we're gonna do on uh, um, you know, we call it impacting the business. Um, you know, we'll 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 talk about how to actually use those um, the, those case studies and those techniques in practice. Um, I also didn't put here, but we might do another case study on A-B testing, but we'll see how it goes. So we'll try to keep this a bit dynamic in the sense that, you know, we're going to check on your responses, check on, 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 the, on the progress, on the success rate of, of homeworks and exercises. And depending on that, we'll either kind of pick up the pace or maybe slow down depending on uh, um, how we're all doing. Okay. I'll pause here for a second. Any questions so far? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. There are two questions in the chat. Uh, first is about our language. So you can read it. Um, so okay. Alina Khan uh, asks, can we use R instead of Python? And yes, uh, would it be possible for instructors to share code in R along with Python in seminars? Oh, okay. That's a painful question. It will probably go to Anwar. Uh, <laughs> sorry, man, I put you on. Yeah, yeah, the answer is I will share Python code and I will share Orange uh, projects, but I'm sorry I couldn't uh, like implement in all the languages that are out there. So if you know if you know R, it will be very easy since our course is actually like basically introduction and, and more focused on the key studies than on the languages, than on the implementations, then uh, if you are familiar with R, it will be pretty easy to, to transfer the Python code into R code. So you will actually have no problem with doing that. <laughs> so, so yeah, so you can probably, um, so can, can, they, can they submit the, the homework in R if they prefer R? Yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah. So guys, yeah, uh, so, but but the, the catch is you're not gonna get support from us in terms of you have any any problems with, with R code. Um, I mean, I used to write in R, it was a long time ago, and, and I know it's, it's, it's a bit of religion. Um, Python is actually very, very logical. 
R is, um, you know, sometimes things work, sometimes they work like a magic, sometimes they do not, and nobody knows why not. So um, the short answer, you can use R, but at your own risk. So you're not going to get help from us in terms of R. We're going to be helping with Python and Orange. OK? Yeah, and the second question, uh, won't we be using Jupyter or the whole course is built around Orange? Oh, you mean Jupyter Notebooks, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think, again, a lot of it's, it's, it's to you. Uh, yeah, the answer is uh, this course is, is actually less about the implementation part and more about ideas and business cases. So you could actually use any language you want, and I will accept your uh, solutions in, in any imaginable languages, uh, programming languages that, that you could provide. Uh, the thing is, I will provide examples in Python and in Orange. But if you could use any other language like C++ or C Sharp or, or, or Java or, or anything else, I will accept that. And and, the, but but you're going to use Jupyter notebooks. I mean, you're going to use Jupyter notebooks in your example. Yeah, I'm right? going to use Jupyter notebooks, and yeah, that's right. If you want to use MATLAB or or anything else, I will accept your solutions again in any imaginable language you could you could write on. Okay, anything else, guys? Last question: Should I speak faster, slower? Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. I I'll, I'll just be. I, I would hate, you know, by the end of the lecture to to learn that. Uh, yeah. Well, how about the people didn't understand the word? All right. Um, okay. So let's switch uh, to 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 the topic of the lecture to the data science, and um, you know it 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 feels like not long time ago, but it's ten years from now, ten years ago when Harvard Business Review actually published um, you know, the headliner uh, that the data scientist is the sexiest job of the 21st century. And you know, if, if, if you're a hardcore data scientist, well, that's, where they, that's when data science was sort of born. And um, a lot of people back then were discussing, okay, so what's the difference between data science, business analytics, business analysis, um, advanced analytics, predictive analytics, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the, the, the the, the idea is that data science sits on this intersection of, of three main, main uh, topics, main skills, right? So first of all, it is, um, you know, the understanding of math, statistics, machine learning. So it's a knowledge of um, how to do things. It is uh, computer science IT, which is actually gives you the skills to build things. But, and that's probably the, 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 the key, thing for data science is understanding the, the domain and, and having a business knowledge. So, you know, when we, when we talk about data scientists, we usually have in mind people who can understand the business problem, can interpret it, can convert it into um, some analytical problems, then have enough skills to, you know, find analytical solution and then to implement it, right? To go through this whole path and we're going to look at this path in a second. Um, so starting with business problem and here, um, and I mean, you know, I'll, I'll project um, this onto like real life experience. Um, you know, I used to work for consulting. Um, you know, so there are sometimes there are problems that you understand, but most of the times there are people who, are, who know their, their problems much better than you do. And, and so, first of all, whenever you attack, attack the problem, um, you need to understand what the actual business problem is, right? So, for example, um, you know, the, the, in business, it's usually really about two things, right? Either revenue or costs, right? Either costs raising or, or revenue dropping. Revenue can be dropping because of, say, multiple reasons because of the competitions, because of other things, but it can be also dropping because, you know, customers, for example, leaving. Okay, so the business problem can be all right. Like, let's look at the revenue. We understand that the revenue is decreasing because customers are leaving. Um, what can we do about it? Well, uh, let's assume that we, is it, would it be possible to predict that the customer is going to leave? All right, let's say if we can predict that the customer is going to leave, can we do anything? Well, can we give the customer a discount? All right, then you can say, well, look, why do we need to predict 
um, you know, who's going to live? Let's just give discount to everybody. Uh, well, that's not a good business, right? Uh, remember, your revenue is dropping, so you actually don't want to spend more money. You don't want to increase your costs. So if you want to, you know, spend money, um, you do want to have some positive return on this, right? So if you have customers, and those are valuable customers, right, you don't want to lose, and they're going to leave, yes, you can spend some money, give them some incentive to stay. Okay, so then, uh, so that your business problem is to try to, to find out uh, who is going to leave, and then filter out, out of those people who, out of those customers who are going to leave, filter out those who you as a business want to keep, whose, whose long-term value is high to a business, and you want to, you want to try to preserve that, all right? Okay, so now that means we want to solve a churn problem. We want to predict if the customer is going to leave or not, right? This is your analytical formulation. You want to predict um, customer leaving. Now, um, eventually customers always leave, so this is not a good formulation. You need to specify a time window. Let's say you want to predict that the customer is going to leave within next X, uh, say, days. Now, predicting that the customer is going to leave tomorrow also is not helpful because, you know, there is no time to react. So you need to specify windows sometimes in the future uh, and some sort of finite size window, right? So that's your formulation. That's the problem. Now, to solve this problem, uh, how are you going to address this? How, how can you solve this problem that the customer is going to leave? What, what can you do? And that's a question. If you, if you, if you, if you have any ideas, please speak up. Analyze their behavior, buying behavior, for example, or uh, behavior of using some services, uh, okay. frequency, for example. Well, it's like RFM analysis uh, technique, for example. So, so yeah. So, the, so, so the idea is yes. Uh, you need to have some data on the customers, right? You need to have some historical data, and um, you need to look at the data, and you know you might come up with sort of some features, right, um, that you think are important um, that can be a predictor that the customer is going to leave. Let's say if it's a telecom service or maybe it's a store, um, if you see that the frequency with which the customer is using it decreasing, right, then maybe it's going to leave. That's, that's a good point. So, but in order to do this, you need to have some historical data, right? So you need to know the sort of the baseline, the normal behavior, and those abnormalities. Um, even better, if you have historical data of actually customers leaving, then you can compare a behavior of any current customer with those customers who actually stayed in the past with your service and those who left, right? And then based on this comparison, you can decide whether the customer is good. You can predict whether the customer is going to stay or leave. So, um, we just moved from analytic formulation to algorithmic solution, because now I'm setting up this as a classification problem. I want to classify customers into those who's going to stay or going to live based on their historical behavior. And their historical be behavior we can encode as different features. And so, okay, good. So now we, we started with business problem. We realized what analytical formulation we can give. Um, this is an algorithmic, um, algorithmic solution will be uh, some supervised learning algorithm. Um, say we can do I don't know, logistic regression, for example, to solve this. Um, then we build proof of concept. Proof of concept is usually, and that's what we actually will be doing in this course. We'll be building proof of concepts, um, which is, you know, we'll be doing a standalone code um, that will work on some historical data that we'll provide you, right? And we'll be giving we'll, we'll be giving predictions. And in some sense, within the business, it's you know data scientists who are the users of the this proofs of concept. It is something to convince business that your algorithms that you approach that you code works and that it can be used um, in 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 practice. So after that. If and, and that's actually the, so our course is this four first four steps. Now in real world in the real business after proof of concept you go and build minimum viable product, which is an actual product uh, written by software engineers, um, integrated with all the databases, getting uh, live data um, and providing predictions. Why is it MVP? Well, because 
typically these days, um, you know, you work in agile fashion. And so when you build products, you build it with a, with a minimal number of um, features, right? And then you evolve and develop. And uh, the last but not least, and this is extremely important. And honestly, this is where most of the um, data science projects fail in real life is changes in business process. So, you know, your, your, the best of the algorithm that you write is useless unless business changes the processes uh, around, unless business integrates this into their processes and changes processes around it. What I'm trying to say here is, yes, you can have the best possible um, analytical formulations, solution, and excellent algorithms running, uh, you know, wonderful and correctly. But if at the end, nothing is done to the customers, or if the offer that's being proposed is, is, is poor and not interesting, or if the execution is slow, it's not going to be used in business and it's going to be useless. And so this last thing is extremely important. That's where a lot of consultants that who work for business, you know, spending their time on. Uh, actually putting the right solution in place. Um, but as a data scientist, you're usually responsible for this first four steps. And it is uh, after that, it's a project owner who has to put it into um, real usage in business. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to cover all the possible analytical methods that um, exist in, in data science. So first of all, it's things that you know, we, we're going to talk about in this course. It is this predictive modeling, machine learning, data mining. So it's analysis of the, um, the data that we collect from business. And most of the time, we're going to be dealing here with a structured data. Data, which mean, structured means the data comes in forms of tables. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it can be consumer behavior. Um, it can be some other statistical information. And we're going to try to either predict the future, try to understand, um, you know, the, the, the patterns in the data, um, analyze them. Now, this is a, actually a very, very big set of problems, uh, but it sort of goes under this predictive analytics, machine learning kind of title. But that's not the only method that today use in data science. Um, another big important part is operations research and optimization. That's where you have all the logistics problems that where you can optimize flow of goods. Then when, that's where you calculate optimal prices, uh, pricing, et cetera, et cetera. It is a sort of big, big, big field by itself. We're not gonna touch it today. In th we're not gonna touch it in this course, um, but just be aware that this is quite a special field. Another um, method, another class of methods that are quite important is uh, simulation methods. One of them is, for example, agent-based modeling, um, where it's, it's a lot of problems in business that is actually hard to cleanly formulate, or actually, if you, even if you formulate, difficult to solve analytically from the beginning to the end. You know, the classic example is, say, um, in a traffic light intersection with a traffic light and cars coming in, it's very hard to predict the, the, the traffic jams and, and the behavior um, of the cars. So what people usually do is they go and do simulation, right? Where every agent, in this case, a car will be agent, an agent can perform. You can do the same thing, um, for example, when you try to solve logistics problems, um, when you have different warehouses, when you have flows of goods, uh, where you have delays in every warehouse, where you have different types of good flow into different warehouses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can try to solve optimization problem. It is hard. People often resort to simulations. And finally, there are sort of very specific special types of analytics methods that also being used in business. Um, well, it's a geoanalytics. Um, it's uh, where you take uh, and, and you use, for example, different optimization and machine learning methods together with uh, geographic information, for example, geocoordinates. Um, let's say you, you try to optimize the locations of your warehouses or locations of the stores, um, covering sort of the, the maximum um, area with, with minimum expense. And there are also very, very important uh, problems and, and approaches of text analysis or natural language processing. 
analyzing texts, where, where, where you, you talk about analyzing reviews, custom responses, all those things, and computer vision or image analysis, which is also a very, very big field. Again, in this course, we're not going to touch those. It's not because they're not important. It is more because they are uh, there, there are sort of some boxed solution uh, for text analysis, for computer vision that do you know very, very good job. In this course, we'll be focusing more on applying sort of bare bones algorithms um, to their um, you know sales and marketing um, data. Um, having said that, uh, again, I you know, if, if you're not familiar with what, to, I, I don't think it's worth your time to actually uh, go deep uh, on, on, on understanding how NLP or computer vision works, um, unless you are expert in that, uh, but understanding what's possible using those algorithms is probably worth, worth, worthwhile. Again, in this course, we're gonna be focusing on the left box, which is machine learning, uh, predictive modeling, data mining, sort of predictive analytics um, approaches. So there were several reasons why we use machine learning in business, right? So first of all, when we look into the data, we might want to sort of look into the past and, and, and describe, right? Um, often you want, to, um, you want to understand what has happened, right? For example, you know, again, your revenue uh, dropping, you want to understand why is it dropping, you want to see um, what's happening in terms of, sort of, for example, sales, and you want to see um, how they change in the function of time, how they change in different locations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you want to maybe detect some sort of traces of something unusual. And you want to detect it and you want to describe it. Um, well, second reason is you want to be able to predict things, right? Um, as I said, there's demand forecasting. This is the simplest uh, and the most important thing to predict, but you can also, um, you know, demand forecasting is uh, the, the sort of the scale of the store prediction, but you can also want to predict on the level of each customer when it's possible. Again, is a customer going to churn or not? If the customer is going to buy, you might want to predict um, if the you know what what what's the next purchase will will be for the customer, etc., etc., etc. And you want to quite often you want to explain things. You want to explain what 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 has happened um, in the business. But in any case, whatever, whether you're looking at, you know, detecting and describing, predicting, explaining, this is all great, except for business is really about making money. And uh, to make money, you need to optimize and improve, right? And so all these methods are used to try to optimize the performance and improve and optimize the performance, right? Because that's the actual goal of pretty much any of those things. Um, without this last step, you know, optimizing, improving, you know, that's just an exercise. Um, here's a very, very simple, you know, sort of toy example, but hopefully will, um, you know, give you some sort of flavor on what I'm talking about. Um, you know, let's say we have some system uh, where, the, where you have some, function, you know, output as a function of input, looking at the left, left, um, left column. And let's say um, you were, you, you, you could measure the value of the output based on the value of the input. Well, or again, you know, this has nothing to do with business, but, you know, think about for a second, I don't know, your high school experiments where you, you can turn the knob, um, increase say the voltage measure, uh, measure the response of the system, or uh, here it can be, you know, price. You know, you increase the price, you you measure the volume of of you change the price, you measure the volume uh, of the purchases, right? But you have only three data points. You know, it just happened. Uh, for example, how that happened? Well, you had a price, and then you had a you know you had a price for an item. You know how how you you know how many items were were sold. Um, then you have a discount. And then you know how my, how many were sold, and then you have you, you know you kind of double the discount, right? And that's your three data points, right? So then, what you can do is you can use machine learning to predict the outcome, right? Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, um, 
we can actually try to interpolate in between those points. And though we only know three data points, we could say, well, look, what would happen if we have given it slightly different discount? You know, how much, uh, how, how many items we would solve? Would be solved, right? Or again, if, you, if you're more a physics kind of a guy, you know, you change the voltage, how much response would change for any value. And that will give you, we we'll can calculate this, this curve. But then going back to business, you want to get the maximum response. So having this curve now, you can actually optimize, you can do optimization. You find the point, find the value of the input that provides you the maximum output. And so that's the ultimate goal of the data scientist in business. It is taken a few data points, going through some modeling, and then solving for some optimal solution, right? In some of the problems, um, like for example, say demand forecast, we'll be actually forecasting. We'll not be looking for an optimum, but it is sort of the next person from us. So the sales and, and the, the sales managers, right? They will be looking into how to optimize knowing the demand, um, how to optimize um, stockpile. But that's kind of, the, this is the essence. Any questions so far? May I ask a question, please? Sure. Uh, now you told that a physics guy can measure the voltage and uh, with the machine learning, deep learning, we can create the approximation of function. And does it really work with the uh, physical process really well? I mean, just for instance, uh, deep learning cannot work uh, with some problems, uh, et cetera. Uh, can we get really a nice uh, model for physical process too? Or what is your opinion for, uh, for that? Um, actually, I, 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 I would disagree with you. In fact, um, deep learning you know, will work pretty well uh, for, the, for a lot of physical processes. It's just a matter of how much data you would provide to this, um, to describe this process. I mean, yes, it will not handle uh, some sort of very crazy uh, things, but um, guys actually even reproduced and learned uh, Newton's laws from observing, for example, how a pendulum is swinging, right? Um, automatically without actually knowing those laws. And that has been done with machine learning. So. Um, and uh, you know, machine learning is quite versatile. Um, now, it's not always straightforward how to use it, right? And of course, you know, it will not be able to solve all the questions. Here in this course, we'll be focusing more on some sort of you know simpler function, if you wish, right? And, and more standard approaches. We're not going to be doing uh, deep learning here in this course. Um, you know, the reasons is again this introductory course. Plus, very often. Um, you know, in 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 the case in the in in the, those use cases that we're going to look that we're looking into, um, the classic traditional methods work the best. Um, at the same time, in natural language processing and uh, computer vision, that's where deep learning really shines these days. Now, um, I'll move forward and just say a few words of you know very different use cases that you might see in 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 business that are related to, you know, that can be used by data scientists, right? Where data scientists can work. And here they are sorted by, um, you know, different um, domain, right? So for example, if you see, think about CG or consumer goods um, domain, then of course the business problems, right? That you might want to solve are demand forecast, right? Trying to predict demand in the future. It is marketing personalization. Yes, this is trying to understand, um, what particular customer would be interested in and what kind of offer uh, to provide to a customer. And if we can do it on the level of individual, this is great. I mean, it's not very realistic. You know, if you have hundreds, millions of customers, then you still do some sort of bucketing, but it is personalization, right? It's, it's providing special offers for a small group of people. Pricing and promo effectiveness. This is a question of trying to understand price elasticity or how, um, demand changes with price and uh, how promotions um, affect um, the, the price elasticity and overall your bottom line, what kind of promotions 
how they work. Um, that's what the, this is about. Assortment optimization is, for example, if you're if you're a large store, what kind of uh, goods um, you need to store and in which volumes, right? So, and of course, again, remember that the goal is to get the maximum revenue, right? Um, so then the question is, okay, what the right mixture of stuff you need to have? Cross-sell and upsell, again, this is, uh, you know, how you provide um, various, uh, you know, promotions, how you do different promotions, how you, you, you sell uh, together um, different items, right? This is a cross-sell. Um, Telecom's typical problems is, okay, well, it, it, you know, churn and retention modeling, and we're going to talk about it, this, you know, for, for actually this is both for um, telecoms and banking, a churn and retention is quite important, is less important for consumer goods, simply because in telecoms and banking, customer acquisition is expensive and customers are expensive. And so um, that's why, you know, and, and they make a lot of money from each single customer. Um, and that's why the, the churn retention and modeling uh, sits in both telecoms and banking. Um, next best offer, yes, this can be in consumer goods or in telecoms. This is sort of what's, you know, we, we offered you something, what's what, what's the next best thing we can offer for you. Um, but then there is like network optimization problem. This is very much a logistics problem um, where you put, um, for example, you know, cell towers or, or stores and infrastructure capacity utilization it's again about a sort of optimizing the back end um, how you actually run the services uh, in banking uh, well first of all it's of course you know credit score credit risk assessment it's it's risk i mean banks were always about risks risks modeling um, it's also about fraud detection that's very challenging and interesting problem um, claim management, when you get various claims, how you handle them, and also the sort of next best offer, for example, you know, when you, when, when you go to the bank today, um, you're, bombard you're bombarded by different offers. Well, obviously, um, instead of sort of getting multiple, multiple sort of competing offers, you might, you know, the bank is better off giving you an offer that they think you're going to take, right? And uh, that's next best offer. But then, uh, again, these are the things that deals with consumers. And uh, in this course, that's what we're going to be focusing on, sort of this type of B2C um, consumer, consumer focused problems. Um, that definitely is not all that data science deals with. Um, then you can think about sort of very, very many other um, industries, like, for example, industrial goods. And that's where you're talking about factories, about manufacturing. Um, over there, it's of course manufacturing process optimization. So we want to optimize, you know, that we want to optimize energy consumption. We want to um, optimize, sort of minimize loss, uh, maximize output. It's a predictive maintenance, trying to predict uh, when the equipment is going to fail and. Uh, then again, the action would be to, for example, replace it before it fails. Um, but then there is also, of course, a demand and supply forecast. But in this case, it's it's you know the supply chains for for the factories, um, you know the planning of operations, scheduling of operations, insanely important. Energy efficiency I already mentioned. By the way, now with this whole whole sort of crisis thing, um, this becomes the, the industrial goods thing becomes extremely important because all the supply chains are really broken these days um energy well this is also quite similar to industrial goods it's it's also optimizing logistics um it's robotics automation it is think about um the oil production you know oil platforms think about you know all those uh, you know gas transport systems pipes um laying around the country um there are a lot of sort of numerical things you can do in, in, in both of those. Um, also interesting to notice that, for example, if you think about the depth of penetration of data science, right? Um, say banking and telecoms usually comes uh, as number one in terms of the level of sophistication. Um, those guys are used to work with data, with the customer data, um, and they're, they're, they're quite happy with using data science. Um, in consumer goods, it's it's a little bit behind. 
um, interestingly enough, with energy industrial good, that's where um, it's at this, at, as of today, this is where probably um, the slowest intake of machine learning and data science. And that has to do with, on one hand, um, you know, the fact that for many years it was not, um, it was not used as a, as, a, as a numerical, there was not, not a lot of sort of numerical computations aside from, you know, sort of engineers ca calculating, um, for example, you know, the, the, the geology for, for, for energy, for, for oil um, development. Um, and, uh, and, and it's also not very much data being recorded or has been recorded previously in both of those uh, fields. So again, today, consumer goods, telecoms, banking, they are the best positions for, for, for data science type of problems. And of course, there is, if you think about, you know, enterprise in general, um, there are problems like sort of back office automation, or, or it's called RPA, robotic process automations. Um, then the, you know, the performance management, the workforce, workforce planning, all, all the sort of things around HR predicting who is going to quit, uh, predicting, you know, who, who is going to, best match the position um, and simulating various sort of scenarios how business is going to evolve and develop. So, and this is just a very, very kind of quick uh, look at, you know, use cases that are used um, in business, um, how data science is used in business. Again, in this course, we're going to be focusing on this sort of left box as I show. Now, if we go to techniques, the machine learning, um, those of you who are familiar, of course, you know, you know what I'm going to talk about. Those of you who are not familiar with machine learning, this is not even an introduction. This is just a hint of what's going to come um, in a few lectures. Um, you know, generally speaking, there are three types of machine learning, all effects right now, they're in the fourth type. Um, but we're going to focus on two types. One is uh, so-called unsupervised learning. And this is an approach where you do not have any sort of supervision for the algorithm and algorithm by itself um, required to discover uh, structure in the data. Uh, you know, for example, I want to understand, uh, you know, the groupings of the customers um, and I'll just, you know, give um, customers with some features um, with their, for example, information about them to the algorithm and hope that algorithm will group together customers based on um, you know, some certain properties, say, say some customer behavior or something else. And that's unsupervised. Now, supervised learning, this is an um, algorithm that we, when we want to predict um, based on some known target, based on the examples. So we have, for example, you know, group, group of customers um, that we know churned out from the service, left the service, and we know their behavior. And we also have a group of customers um, that stayed with the service and we know their behavior. These are two classes, people who left and who stayed, um, and we know their behavior before they, you know, before those guys who left, left. And um, then we can train an algorithm that will classify for any new customer, whether he's gonna leave or stay, if he stays. You know, and then you know, another classic example here, which I'm sure you've you heard many times about, you know, cats and dogs, right? You give a lot of examples of cats, you give a lot of examples of dogs, and then you give a new picture and algorithm decides whether it's a cat or dog. That's supervised learning where you have a bunch of examples. Reinforcement learning is a very different type of algorithms, which is, you know, today used mostly in robotics and say in self-driving cars, where, um, uh, you do sort of makes makes where the algorithm makes certain actions and at the end gets a delayed reward, right? Um, reinforcement learning, of course, used for, for chess playing and sort of other games. It's not widely used in, in business today. Um, and one of the reasons it, it's very, very sort of data hungry um, and it, it's not particularly suited for, for what we need to do here. Now, um, there is yet, you know, another flavor of the algorithm that became popular within the last couple of years called self-supervised learning, where you try to kind of train the algorithms um, when you um, have also sequential data and kind of make them uh, supervise themselves um, based on uh, some properties of, of the data. 
Again, we're not going to go into that, but the, those self-supervised algorithms used today in uh, natural language processing and uh, computer vision a lot. So for us, it is this two sort of simplest class of algorithms. It is unsupervised learning, uh, where we detect um, the, the sort of natural grouping of the data, or we will, for example, use some sort of create some sort of visualizations based on, 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 on the properties of the data. And the other one is supervised learning where we learn by examples, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, the, the galore of algorithms, there are a lot of them. Um, for supervised learning, we're gonna be talking about, you know, classification, which is uh, separating um, into or predicting into, for example, two classes. Right um, and uh, or or it's can be actually multi-class classification. So you know, predicting into three, four, whatever classes, or regression problems. Regression meaning predicting the numerical value. So classification is uh, usually about you know it's 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 typically it's bi binaries, um, and regression some numerical value. There are also type of ranking algorithms. Uh, you know, an example is page rank, for example, where you as as a solution of the algorithm you actually uh given a rank of um of, of data points or uh, values uh, that comes again like in a search engine um you want to set sort of preferences and uh you know the the, the algorithm that we're going to be looking into mostly it's going to be like decision trees nearest neighbors random forest svms so um a lot of sort of classical algorithms for deep learning, we typically don't have enough data, um, but we'll see, maybe we'll touch a little bit on that. And for regression, yes, we'll start with linear regression, but we're gonna look more into kind of uh, another stable class of algorithm regression trees. And unsupervised learning, uh, which is, you know, looking at the result without pre-knowledge or, or response, um, there is a clustering, which I have described, which is finding groups of, points or customers that that you know more closely sort of associate with each other than with others um uh and and there are sort of several approaches where k-means is sort of the, the, the absolutely classical way of doing it um dimensionality reductions um you know looking into projecting on some low dimensional or space or finding some representation for the data that can be easily used um, and you know we'll probably look into some anomaly detection if we get to the fraud detection algorithms. Again, we're not trying here to capture and to do sort of the state of the art machine learning. We are uh, the goal of the course is to connect business problems, like real business problems, things that you you will meet if you go and and work as a sort of data analyst, data scientist in today's business, right? With algorithms and trying to interpret trying to get to the results and interpret the results. Um, you know, there is a sort of standard pipeline um, that, you know, one uses when we try to do modeling. And we typically start with um, data understanding, right? So we want to understand the data and head. We want to check uh, the quality of the data because, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So you, you always want to make sure um, that the data actually means what you think it means, that the columns means what you think they, they mean, that, you know, you, um, that uh, it's all the right thing. Um, then you do some sort of um, ETL um, uh, activities. So you need to get, to get the right data in the right format. You need to clean it up. You need to aggregate it. Um, and ETL stands for Extract, Transfer, uh, Transform, Learn. Uh, I'm sorry extract, transform, load. Um, and uh, you will have, I think, the second seminar will be dedicated to actually sort of exercises um, on data preparation. When you, when you have prepared the data, uh, and that's in fact, like most, like a lot of time goes there, right? You spend on a data preparation. Um, then you do model development and, and you try to train the model. Um, there are some methods how you, you know, verify the quality of the model. And, and, you know, model never works right away. You need to get used to it. And so whether you, you start developing the model, it doesn't work, okay, then you fix the data preparation. Then you start evaluating the model. It, um, it doesn't work. You go back to data understanding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you just kind of, this is 
this is a cycle and you can go through the cycle many, many times until you actually get to the point where you're ready to do the proof of concept and you know get to um, the pilot and eventually interpret the results. And uh, um, later on, uh, you know, if you're successful and um, you know you, you're done with your um, you know with, with your model, then you start looking sort of broader um, into how you know it can be interacted, how it can be injected um, into the business. Um, and you know the, the, there is the sort of the pipeline. Um, it's you know you, you need to collect the data by connecting it by connecting to the sources of the data in in the actual business right environment. You have your your AI solution, which is a prototype you build on the previous page. But then um, big problem sort of integrating with IT ecosystem and usually in a large enterprise, this is not an easy piece. Um, putting it into business and, uh, and adjusting all the sort of uh, business decision making based on, on, on your solution. And finally, when you've done it, then you can, for example, deploy it um, and scale it. And scaling can be meaning scaling. It. You usually when you deploy those things, you first make it work for a small number of customers, then you make it you know, work for all the customers, you, you make it work for one geography, then you make it work for all geographies. So this is a problem of actually scaling the solution. And you know, this is probably, this slide is sort of when you already, not just a data scientist, but when you are uh, responsible for the launch of product, that's the picture, that's sort of the, the width and the depth um, of this data science solution or analytics project, um, you know, how it can be integrated into the business. And um, really there is this sort of several success factors for the, pro for the project, right? So first of all, uh, data, right? It's again, goes back to data. You don't have data, you don't have analytics project. You have bad data, you'll have bad analytics project. So um, you need to have very nice, clean uh, data. You don't have enough data, collect more data. Um, otherwise, you're going to fail. And so first is sort of data collection, algorithm development, right? This is really what sort of data scientists are good for. And that's what we will be trading you for um, on, 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 on this very first step. Um, the second thing is more about software engineering, right? It's integration with the technology. It's uh, scalability, industrialization algorithms, developing different digital uh, platforms. And the last step um, is really uh, um, business transformation, which is redesigning a business process um, enablement, uh, where you enable people to use and change management. So change the processes um, using your software. So um, these are all three steps. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, from the real life sort of perspective, um, it is probably, you know, 20% of the effort goes into algorithm development, 30% into, um, you know, technology, IT, and 50% goes into actually making business use what you build, right? Uh, but without this first step, nothing else is going to happen. So it is extremely, extremely important. And um, yes, so that's the last slide for this lecture. This was a very much sort of introductory lecture trying to just show you sort of the, the width of um, what we're going to cover. Um, and at this moment, I'm going to stop and take questions if there are any questions. Professor, usually on our projects, we will use that pipeline scheme. Uh, is it correct? So you will give us a data uh, and give us the, a purpose and uh, we will find a best solution. Correct. Yes. So we're going to be, we're going to work with you on um, the, you know, we will, first of all, we'll have data prepared for you, right? Uh, you, of course, will have to do some sort of, you know, we'll explain to you what data uh, what the meaning of the data. You will have to do some data preparation, some modeling and some model evaluation. Uh, before we'll get into this process, we of course will set up um, you know, the, the business task and uh, help you to go through this very, 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 is it uh, on the first slide? Yes, we're gonna help you um, go from uh, business problem setup to analytic formulation. 
right? So you would understand what precisely need to be computed. Um, and then you kind of go on your own and, and build um, algorithmic, algorithmic solution. And well, instead of proof of concept, because you know we, we're not gonna be checking um, the code, but we'll be checking the results that your code would produce. Okay, all right. Well, uh, if there's no more questions, I think Anwar, uh, you guys gonna start what in ten minutes or at seven? Uh, uh, at I, think I, I think at seven forty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And for seminars, there is a separate link. So if we're done here, then we could. We could okay, Excuse yeah. me. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, I would like uh, to know the, the system of grading if you haven't mentioned it yet. Oh, okay. I haven't. Anwar, do we have, how are we gonna grade? I think we have uh, five home assignments and basically the resulting uh, uh, score is the weighted average of your home assignments. And we will have five of them. Yeah, so it's cumulative grade accumulated during the, during the course, there is no exam. And no tests during the course. I mean, you, do, like you, will, do, you will do homework, right? And so each mm -hmm. homework will be graded. Okay, I understand. Thank you. And uh, do all these tasks are about uh, one case, or we have uh, five separate uh, separate cases uh, which we uh, resolve by? Yes, there will, be five, there will be five different cases. Okay, so each you. homework will be its own its own business case. And its own model and its own data. And so everything starts from scratch on Sounds every case. Work. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course. Will we have the videos of the lectures or seminars recorded and uploaded on LMS? Yes, we will. I mean, this is being recorded. Uh, we will put it on YouTube if it's still working. And uh, I don't know. We'll figure out where to put it. Thanks. And, and do we have a uh, team project or is this is individual projects? Uh, we're planning this as individual projects. Okay, thank you. Just one quick question. How long will we have on average for each home assignment? Anwar, that's to you. So we have uh, five assignments and uh, our course is uh, nine weeks. And the last week we will not have any assignment. And I think uh, on the eighth week we, we will also will not have an assignment. So basically this will be about 10 days per assignment, something like that. A little bit more than a, a one week. Okay, thank you. All right, good. Well, again, guys, it was nice meeting you. Thanks for coming, and I'll see you in a week. And Anwar, we'll see you. We'll see you in. in uh, we'll see you in in twenty minutes or at seven forty. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank goodbye. You. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.